So let me tell you guys a little bit of a story. So a few weeks ago, I was reading this book called Shadow and Bone, a book that I've heard a lot of good things about. And although it was good, I kind of found it to be kind of disappointing. So when I saw there was a Netflix series of it, I did not care too much. I mean, I didn't really like the book too much, so I figured the show would probably be about the same quality. Three weeks later, I kind of finished the entire thing, and I really liked it and did not expect to enjoy it as much as I did. And surprisingly, I enjoyed it and found it much more entertaining than the actual book. But why is that? Well, after analyzing the book and TV show for a couple of days, I realized that although there are a lot of factors, I think the main one has to do with perspective. So I started thinking about it more and more, and I thought, what other shows use perspective badly or good that make it better? And I started thinking more and more about it, and hi, I'm Cloud, and we're going to be talking about perspective for the next 15 or so minutes. For those who don't know, perspective, or point of view, is how a story is presented to us. For example, is it told through the lens of one character, is it told through the lens of many, etc, etc. Many shows and a lot of media in general play with the idea of perspective. For example, the game Love Sam makes you question what perspective we're playing in, and games like Doki Doki Literature Club use it a lot. But we're not going to be talking about video games too much today, we're going to be talking about shows. Maybe one day I'll post a video about the nuances and intricacies of other media and how they use perspective, and I'll use examples there. But that day is not today, because I am a high schooler, and I ain't got that type of time. <laughs> this kind of poses a problem with me talking about Shadow and Bone in general, though. Because me how talking about how Shadow the Bone, the book, writes perspective, versus the Shadow and Bone, the series, writes its perspective, it's going to be a lot different because the two mediums are very different from each other and they have different ways of portraying that. But in Shadow and Bone, it's a lot more noticeable. You'll see what I mean later. The book mainly follows in our main character, Alina's perspective. It's written in the first person, which is already a problem because the series is a fantasy series and the series has to spend a lot of time world building and the series also has a lot of characters in it. So... Why is that really a problem? Well, if it's just following our main character, Lena's perspective, we only get her view of everything. And with this massive and advanced world where there are a ton of characters, it's going to be hard to get screen time with all of those characters and fully understand our nuances. This is especially true for our main love interest, Mal, who the Shadow and Bone fandom has a quite shall we say, distaste of him. And I can kind of understand why. I only read the first book, but even from then, I could tell his personality was a bit grating. And some of his behavior ranged from kind of being mildly questionable to actually being really annoying and rude. And it isn't like Mal is a character who's supposed to be one note or even mysteriously bad or anything. He's literally just a love interest. And the book makes it clear that we are supposed to root for him, and supposed to root for Mal and Alina being the main ship. The series actually covers two books in its storyline. The storyline of Shadow and Bone, and the storyline of its sister series, Six of Crows. Which I will say right now, I have not read. So don't expect any comparisons on those two. But the show is already a lot better, because it adds more perspective to the series. And it allows other characters to grow. This is especially true with Mal, which, because of his added perspective, makes a lot of the more weird things he does in the series a lot more understandable. And makes him actually likable. And I don't want to leave the crows out of this too. I will admit that they help with the world building quite a lot. In the book, we only get world building of two places, Little Palace and Small Science. Although I might be wrong on that, don't quote me. But I feel like the crows have more of an added sense of world building and help it flow a lot better. But that might just be because we're combining two series into one, so it's more formatted for a show. I'm not really sure. But to me, after looking at Shadow and Bone, it kept begging the question, are there other shows that 
either are dragged down or brought up what their perspective and what perspective they use. And to fully realize that, we need to look at other shows. And um, I think this is the best time to talk about Steven Universe. Now, disclaimer. I have not fully seen Steven Universe. I have seen a lot of the clips. I have seen a lot of one-off episodes and Cartoon Network before. And I happen to know about the show's production history. But I have not fully seen Steven Universe. And for that, I am sorry. I wanted to watch it, but the show is five seasons long. And I don't really have time to watch and record five seasons of Steven Universe. Especially with everything else that's going on right now. So I decided to just go off my basis and my knowledge. Now, that being said... If I say anything wrong regarding my criticisms of the show, or anything I have to say in the show in general, please correct me. I love listening to your guys' opinions, and I just want to make sure I get this right. But in a lot of my research for this video, I watched a lot of reviews. And in those reviews, one criticism I saw levied against Steven Universe quite a bit was that the show is mainly told through the perspective of Steven. Now, why is this a problem? Well, it's a problem because it causes the show to have stilted development. We can't get a Lars-related episode until Steven takes time out of his day to go visit Lars. We can't have an Amethyst-related episode unless Steven is there to go through her journey with him. We can't get a Peridot-related episode unless Caridot comes over for a sleepover or whatever. We can't get any other character-related episodes... Unless Steven is there for them. This causes the show to have pretty stilted character development for both Steven and the other characters. Because sometimes it seems like Steven is their mental crutch with cases like Pearl. And sometimes it just seems like Steven is just standing off to the side while the gems cry their eyes out. This is also a problem because it causes Steven to have stilted character development as well. Because he has to fit like 12 different roles with him. For example, he has to be in every man one episode so Garnet can explain his future sight to him. But then another episode, he can also be a hero, going through an epic space journey and saving Lars and whatever. But then the next episode, he has to be the mentor figure and has to teach Amethyst not to shapeshift into his mom to traumatize his father. It's just really weird. And sometimes fitting multiple roles into one character works. But if the characters flip-flop so often, it becomes kind of a problem because it causes inconsistent character development to the point where your character is just either a Mary Sue or just doesn't know who they are. They don't have an identity. Again, this is kind of just an outsider's perspective looking in on the whole Steven Universe debacle. Honestly, to me, Steven kind of seems like a male Mary Sue for the entirety of Steven Universe. Until Future happened, which I will admit, I didn't find a nice change to his character arc. But I digress. Well, I mean, if we have already two examples of series where we tried the first person perspective and it didn't really work out so well, we should assume that first person perspective for every TV series is bad, right? And we should only go with omniscient or partially omniscient, right? (sighs) No, unfortunately, writing is never that simple. For example, let's talk about season four of The Dragon Prince. Now, I will admit that a lot of the issues in general are just because the show struggles with pacing, but I believe that ever since The Dragon Prince started, it always kind of had a trouble with having too many characters on screen and trying to shove all of those perspectives into the series, causing the pacing and the show in general to feel just kind of janky. But in season 4, all of this just gets pushed up to a thousand. Since the show is so adamant on making us spend every moment with each character, it honestly feels like the show is cramming way too much into it, and it makes it feel really boring. I mean, sometimes it works. Sometimes we get to spend time with characters like Claudia and Terry, and just watch them be idiots for a sec. But I don't need to watch 20 minutes of Terry and Claudia making fart jokes with each other. Or I don't even need to focus on that weird guard subplot. I honestly can only tell you one standout scene from this entire season. The scene where Erevos possesses Callum. 
because the show's breakneck pace finally just slows down and we get an extended scene with a group of limited characters with limited perspectives. Other than that, the show is always trying to desperately show you every second of each character's perspective. Whether it be something that we've never seen before, like Kala and Rayla's dead romance, or just Soren being Soren for no reason. Honestly, you know what? That feels mean. I like Soren. Another problem with having too many characters' perspectives drawn at us in the series is that it isn't streamlined enough to hold a consistent plot. For example, and I did not want to bring this up again, but let's talk about Tales of Arcadia. Something I praise other Tales of Arcadia series for doing is having a consistent storyline with consistent themes. All of them seem to be connected in a feeling of the hero's journey, if you will. Different characters living up and realizing their different potentials. And I feel like the series did that really well. Then the movie came out. One of the things I really hate about the movie is that none of the characters besides Jim feel like they get a complete arc. And the arcs that we do get feel like they disregard the narrative of self-discovery in favor of just something smaller or something funny, just for being funny. And again, this is probably because it's a movie, and the movie doesn't really have time to fit the story arcs of 12 different characters in it. So obviously, perspective is quite important, and I've already talked about a handful of series. But the next one I'm about to bring up is kind of interesting. Because it twists perspective in a way that can be seen as very impressive, but also kind of wasteful. I'm talking about the sitcom How I Met Your Mother. Now, if you've fully seen How I Met Your Mother, you must know that it has kind of a controversial ending. Where Tracy dies, and Ted and Robin end up getting together. Now, as someone who had grown very attached to the show, I was very disappointed by the ending when I first saw it. But now, I kind of find it really interesting because of how it plays with perspective. Don't get me wrong, I don't think it works, but I think it's kind of interesting why it doesn't work. Now, from the beginning of the show, it's very clear whose perspective we are watching from. It's Ted's. He's the one telling the story to his children. And sometimes the show uses this fact for comedy. But the interesting thing about the ending is once we figure out that the mother or Tracy, has been dead, it suddenly casts a whole new series in a new perspective. We get an understanding about why Ted has been telling this story, and what this story means for Ted. All of the the experiences in the show feel more like less about Ted telling about the happy times he had, but Ted looking back, knowing that he's never going to have those memories again, but he can still value them. And it's honestly really touching. But the problem here originates for how it affects literally everything else besides Ted. This is especially true with characters like Barney and Robin. To keep this part brief, because honestly, I could make an entire video on How I Met Your Mother, it ruins characters like Barney, who had gone from being a playboy into someone who wanted a genuine romantic relationship with someone he loved, but in the end just makes him go back to his old ways. And it invalidates Robin's arc as well with her learning to come with terms with herself and fighting and figuring out her own love life in general. This also kind of invalidates Tracy in a way, who was an absolutely well-rounded and interesting character, even though she was just introduced in one season. But it forces her to fill this, like, dead mother role for Ted's motivation. In short, the twist on perspective kind of ruins Dree People's arcs, and it makes, like, the series is worth nothing in the end which is why the show is really ruined for so many people. Now, it might seem like I'm just railing against every piece of media I can find because I want to just be that one person on the internet that hates everything. And, um, well, I am doing that. But but there are series I think use a very good job at perspective. So what are those series? Well, one example would be the Ghibli movies, which I would go way more into depth in, but... um. I don't really want to get copyrighted for using Ghibli-related footage. I've seen what's happened to other videos. But another anime-related thing I could talk about in terms of perspective is a movie called The Silent Voice, or The Shape of Voice, I don't know. The movie in general, despite just being really, really good, has a pretty unique way of writing perspective, and I think it makes the movie better. At the beginning of the movie, we're shown the perspective of Ishida, our main character. 
Now, at the very beginning of the movie, it's obvious that we aren't supposed to root for Ishida. I mean, he's bullying someone, and none of us can really root for bullying unless we're sociopaths or anything. And the film doesn't really show us Nishimiya, the victim of the bullying, uh, her perspective, because we don't really need it to feel bad for her. We understand how bad the situation is, because all of us have been bullied before. And even if we haven't been bullied before, we can still see how bad the situation is. But the film is still able to get us to understand Ishida, because it's obvious that he thinks it's funny, even though we know it's not. And the film almost portrays all of these things in a playful way, even though we know this is hurting Nishima. Then, when we skip to Ishida in the present, we almost kind of get a tunnel vision for the rest of the movie, because the film is exclusively drew Ishida's lens, with the X's on the face and how he doesn't really get them unless he sees what they've gone through, aka when he sees their perspective. So basically throughout the film, we're learning about other characters' perspective through Ishida's perspective. Now, when Ishida's in the hospital, for example, we get other characters' perspectives without Ishida being there, without viewing Ishi- Drew Ishida's perspective, their perspective. Now, if that sounds complicated to you, then good, I'm doing my job very well. But the point is, we kind of see Drew this part of the film kind of how weird and biased Ishida's perspective is, and, and how he makes assumptions that aren't always right. And I think that's really good in getting the main message of the film across, which it's basically listening to each other, making connections with each other. And I think that's a really good way to examine the point of the film, basically, drew those characters. And I think that's really important in this movie, because although it uses other story elements really well as well, I think the idea of using perspective as a vehicle to get its main message across is one thing that we should be using more often with our story elements. And I just think it's really cool for this film to be doing that. And of course there are much better examples out there that I could point out. But this is really an example, I think, that gets to the main point. It gets to the main message about what I've been trying to say this entire video, which is when you're choosing what perspective you're writing in your stories, Make sure the audience still gets what you're trying to say in the end. Because that's what it's important. It's important to get your message out there. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a nice time.